What's going on? This is Roy Kennedy, and this is Spaces Between. This is a new uh, live stream podcast project that I'm working on, um, basically to just get to know people in the community, part of the Dice Tower, part of the board game industry, and just have like in-depth conversations with people. So I have my first guest with me here today, Mike Delicio. How's it going, man? It's going good, Roy. How are you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. So I just want this whole, I'm starting a new series thing here, and uh, I invited Mike to join me for my first episode here. It's just going to be a deeper and closer look at um, some of our contributors from the Dice Tower and people that are passionate about board game media or passionate about designing board games or passionate about publishing board games and things like that. Um, but it's just a, a way for us to get get come closer together as gamers, I guess. So. And I uh, talked to you a bunch of it about it at Gen Con, so I was like, "Hey, let's get Mike on. Let's make this happen." Yeah, well, I'm I'm excited to be here. I am honored and proud to be the uh, the first guest on uh, Spaces Between. I, uh, as you said, it was kind of cool because this Gen Con specifically was, I think, the time that you and I got to have the most time where we can actually talk <laughs> to yeah, each yeah. other. At other cons, we kind of would see each other and and. You know, you'd be running off to to do a camera. I'd be working the booth, whatever. Oh, for We'd sure. have little bits, you know what I mean. But this Gen Con seemed like we were able to talk a little bit more. And uh, I remember specifically, you know, we were walking through one of the kind of what do you call those walkways between the convention center and and the hotels, and talking to me about the idea for this. And uh, you know, I thought it was a great idea then, and and uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, yeah, and um. I don't know. I, I feel like this Gen Con, I was like, I know Gen Con's so busy and hectic. Like I wasn't focusing on trying to play games this Gen Con. I was like, I'm going to spend <laughs> this Gen Con like trying to build relationships with people in the industry yeah. and talk to people. I mean, I did lots of networking and stuff like that. But I mean, even people I already knew, like I, I've known you, Mike, for a while. And I mean, yeah. even before I actually knew you, I watched your segments and stuff like that on Board Game Breakfast. It's always weird how you feel like you know people just from like watching their segments, right. you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally true. And and honestly, those are the best uh, segments to me, are the ones where you feel like you're getting a real sense for who that person is. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Uh, that's why, uh, and I'm going to feel awful because I don't know that I'm going to actually remember his name, but the the, the Wargamer guy on yeah, uh, Dan. On Dan. You, don't, don't you feel like you know who he is? after the first time you saw that it's like man I, I would love to just sit down and talk to this guy because he, it, he's obviously genuine he's yeah, coming yeah. through you know Jen board game librarian I met her for the first time and I already felt like I kind of knew uh, what she was like because of her segments are obviously just who she is so yeah uh, and that's the stuff I connect with it's super crazy because like you have those like people who watch your content will come up to you and be like oh my goodness like I love your thing here and there and it's like they already know who you are, even though you don't actually know who they are yet. Like they know, even like yeah. if they listen to your podcast or like watch your different stuff, they're like, they know inside jokes and they know the games you like and don't mm -hmm. like, like they're already friends with you. You just haven't become friends with them yet. And it's so easy right. to just kick that up, like right off, right off the bat. It's like, oh man, we already know each other a little bit or I know, mm -hmm. you know me, so you know what I like. So, hey, tell me about yourself, you know? Exactly. And, you know, I think the thing, it's one thing with video. That's that's definitely where you can you can kind of feel action. But in a weird way, I almost feel like people that listen to podcasts uh -huh. that 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 you know I feel like that's an even more almost uh, intimate's not exactly the right word, but you feel like you know that person more because with a podcast usually it's about conversations. You know that's kind of what what we're doing here, and so you you really get to know kind of their even even the way they talk their vocal mannerisms you know yeah, this is sure. people that you're listening to in your car or when you're you know walking you got your headphones in or whatever mm -hmm. it's really interesting when i started doing uh the podcast with dan that's when i started getting more and more people that would like reach out to me on a more personal level because right. i i feel like they feel like they know you more personally because you're kind of you're somewhat i i, I mean at least i try to be somewhat Un, unguarded. I mean, I try to reveal myself, you know, as much as is appropriate, you know, and I feel like people feel like they've got this really deep connection in some ways because they're hearing you in their ears. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like sure. they're sitting at the table with you. 
And that's actually a big part of like why I wanted to start this is because I feel like it's cool to have like segments and different things about board games and things. And like we all love board games here, but it's also cool to have like that long form discussion about just different things in the industry, get to know the people maybe that are behind these different segments that people love. And like, I don't know, just get to to know that person a little bit better, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And, and one of the, one of the biggest, I guess, joys has been how uh, I have not been disappointed at all by the people that I've met, not only in the Dice Tower, but, you know, specifically in the Dice Tower. I mean, what – let's pat ourselves on the back a little bit, I guess. What an amazing group of people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody that I've met that's connected to the Dice Tower have just been awesome people and very different types of mm-hmm. people, right? It's it's a pretty diverse group of people, Um people from all different parts of the world mm-hmm. uh honestly you know because you you have people that 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 come from other countries even that are that are part of dice tower yeah. um you know i met stella for the first time mm-hmm. uh from meeple university and and you know dave loses from uh, uh he's you better he's get this Dutch, right but he's yeah you know, well you better get this right he's, he's gonna he's gonna yeah, jump on you german and yeah i don't know dave's all over the place but uh <laughs> you know you got people from all over the, you got people from all over the world and the one thing that they all have in common is that they're all really cool people that I've enjoyed yeah, yeah. getting to know. And, you know, we do have this kind of the shared passion of board games, which is always a good jumping off point. But the, that's usually where the conversations start because, you know, you've got that in common. But after, you know, an hour or so, that's when it starts to go into other conversations. And you learn more about them as people. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I, th- I think it's kind of interesting because just like board games in general, you know, like, hey, mm-hmm. If, if you're trying to actually reach out and play board games with people on a casual level, that means people are like choosing to hang out with you and choosing to play board games. And if you're right. good at that and that's like your hobby, then um, then like those people are just – they have to be nicer just based off <laughs> like the, the nature of the hobby itself. Because like, hey, yeah. if you're not a nice person, it's going to be hard for you to get people to play games with you casually. The tournament scene is completely different because – you're paired up against a person. <laughs> right. You have to play with the yeah. person you're paired up against. If you go and sign right. up for the tournament, you're stuck playing against that person. But like in your yeah. board game group, it's like, hey, like it just normally becomes nicer people because you're. I mean, there's no high stakes in these games. We're just sitting around playing them to have fun and have camaraderie and build relationships around playing the games. So I think that's that's one thing that's like the dice tower really shines at. Because I mean, even at our conventions and stuff, we're not like mm-hmm. we're not trying to. Sh- like shove a whole bunch of events down and try to get all these tournaments going, all this crazy stuff. It's really just like, no, no, grab a player's wanted sign, put it on your table, find some random people to play with. Hey, put a teacher's wanted sign. If you need someone to teach for you. I mean, it makes it like super casual and laid back. Yeah, no, it absolutely does. And, uh, you know, I was, because we talk about this as a passion, right? It's mm-hmm. something that, that I think we're both passionate about. And I know you're, you're, you're the host, but hopefully you don't mind if I ask you a question. Oh, that's um, fine. The, making this hobby your career now, right? Or, or uh-huh. your, your, your job. Has that, and you've been doing it for how long now? I guess I technically started at, with the Dice Tower at the beginning of the year. So I guess it's technically okay. eight months now. So, Okay. Do you feel like it has changed your relationship with games at all? Uh, do you feel – have you – I don't want to say lost any of the spark, but, I mean, has it – does it change the way you interact with, with games? I mean, because you're around them all day, every day now. I mean, I mean do you I, still have I that I feel like it has to, right? Like, yeah. if it, – it's definitely been interesting because, I mean, I used to always be like, oh, man, what's the next, like, game I, like, have to get, <laughs> right. have to play? Like, oh, my right. goodness, what's Tom's review? Do you like it? Like, I think that game looks cool, but is it good? I don't have a whole lot of yeah. capital to be, be, like, throwing at games. So that's, I mean, one of the main reasons that I yeah. started following the Dice Tower was because I needed someone to talk about the game so I knew if it was actually good or not. Whether Tom right. actually liked it or not is completely different because, I mean, your tastes sure. don't have to be the same. At least if you're seeing it on the yeah. table and they're telling you how the mechanics work, you can be like, oh, that's good or not good. But, I mean, the, just the fact that when I moved from North Carolina down to Miami, I got rid of, like, more than half of my collection, um, oh, wow. which is insane. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I uh, – what was I going to say? I, I donated, like, a lot – I tried to sell off as much of it as I could just to help sure. fund the move, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, I didn't sell off the games that I loved, but I sold off right. a lot of really good games, like – 
sure. a lot of a lot of people out there would be like, you got rid of what? <laughs> you, yeah. you got rid of yeah. Scythe and Imperial Assault and and Star Wars Rebellion. Like, why would you do that? I love those games. Those games are amazing, sure. but I can't. Right. They don't. I don't have room for all the games, and I. Sure. I it's expensive, you know. But uh, yeah. but then I had a whole bunch of games that I donated to. Uh, I started like a con at my church, um, and they have like two times a year they have like a convention there so i donated a whole bunch of games to them they um gave a whole bunch of games away of the games that i gave them but they also now have some of it for their game library there so like right. now when they have the cons it's like hey we have our own little library um yeah from roy canada's collection back in the day so <laughs> right basically yeah. so there's like a, a shrine of a, of a game shelf there that's like this <laughs> used to be roy's games I right, guess I could right, go yeah. visit them someday, but you know. Yeah, that's true. You could always go visit your 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 lost uh, your lost possessions there. But yeah. yeah, so so on that note, it's really weird now because it's like pretty much every game comes through the studio at some point right. or another. Like every single game, and it's like if I really wanted to, I could have the chance to play it. I mean, these guys like play the games, and we can't play the games all together. And like they go to a game night here, or Sam plays it with his family and stuff like that. Like. A game like Outer Rim, I really wanted to play. Sam played it a bunch yeah. of times with his sons and then played it with some people at, at game night, and I wasn't able to make those certain things, so I didn't actually have a chance to play that. But technically, if I wanted to, I could just borrow it from the Dice Tower library and go play right. it. So, I mean, the nature of that has has changed just how I look on acquiring games in general because they're sure. all there, <laughs> which is weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that would be. But, but other than that, like, I don't know. I mean, I really enjoy board games, but I've shifted more to, like, thinking about, like, how games work and stuff like that. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. And so I, so you're kind of looking at it more from, from the design standpoint, it sounds like, rather than from the, from the user standpoint, from the designer standpoint, to an extent. Yeah, I mean, I used to try to design games, like, back before I ever did board game media, and I was terrible at it, because, mm-hmm. I mean, this was, like... <laughs> six years ago five years ago and i mean i just yeah. didn't have the experience you know um because yeah. i mean um but yeah i've been dabbling with stuff but i'm not allowed to talk about any of it so it's all good <laughs> gotcha we're, 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 we'll save that for another time but yeah that, i mean i was just curious because you know that's for a lot of people that love this hobby uh mm-hmm. whether they're just gamers whether they produce content whether they consume content whether neither um you hear from a lot of them that their kind of dream is to work in, in the gaming industry. And I think like anything, this is just my guess because I don't work in the gaming industry. I think like anything else, there are aspects of it that are amazing, Mm -hmm. but I think that there are probably other aspects of it that, you know, maybe you lose a little something that you had before you were in it as a, as a, you know what I mean? So, um, I don't know whether that's true or not. That's just some gut feeling I have is that, you know, when you when you when it ceases to be just a hobby and now it's something that's actually part of your livelihood, you know, would that just necessarily have to change the way not you not necessarily your love for it, but but maybe just the way that you interact with it. I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting idea. I mean, yeah, it definitely does. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I guess people probably think, oh man, the Dice Tower crew, they're just like in their studio playing games all day mm-hmm. long. <laughs> it's not like that at all. Like, yeah. I mean majority of the game playing goes on outside of the 40 hours a week, you know? So right. it's like yeah. Tom's Tom's videos that he, he does, like he plays the games outside of the studio majority of the time. I mean, we have testing Tuesday specifically yeah. to play games just so that they can hopefully be reviewed. But majority of them are like, we have game nights um, every Tuesday at cool stuff. And then we have like a mm-hmm. game day the last Saturday of each month. Um, and a lot of the games get played at those. Um, so it's like, hey, right. if you want to actually play the board games, <laughs> you have to make time outside yeah. of that to go play them. I mean, majority of the time, I, my job is spent in front of a computer editing some different stuff, putting <laughs> a video together. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't yeah. know if you know, but uh, Tom Vassell puts out a few reviews. Um, so, you <laughs> know, and, yeah. and we're, we, yeah. we do all the live stuff and it's fun because I get to like run board game breakfast and see see uh yeah. mike mike's video come up with solo and then try to ruin the stream real quick no i'm just kidding <laughs> right 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 see see if, see if we can't just uh put some glitches on that bad boy yeah that yeah. trust me that my uh, my videos don't need any help uh getting messed up i do just fun on my own getting that getting that uh getting that out there but yeah no it's um it's 
it's been cool. As I said, I, I, I'm kind of repeating myself here a little bit, but the the whole premise of what you're doing, what I why I'm excited about it is that I think people that maybe have watched uh, segments on Board Game Breakfast or on the old uh, Token Punch Lunch or or Blender uh, or just videos reviews. Uh, or even people that have their own content that do stuff on Dice Tower. I think it's going to be cool for them to get to know people on a little bit of a different level. You know what I mean? Just yeah, because yeah. there are some amazing people that are part of mm -hmm. uh, the Dice Tower. And I think that it sounds like you may be going outside of that a little bit, too, and maybe talking to some industry yeah, yeah. folks if you can. Um, and, you know, depending on what the project is, you know, the, a lot of board game media... And I'm not saying this is a bad thing. It's just a function of what it is. A lot of board game media um, has somewhat of a promotional edge to it, right? Like, like right. a, a you know, they're going to come on a designer and they're going to talk about their project, of course, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it is nice when you can get some outlets like this where it's really just about a conversation because that's yeah. when you uh, get to know people. And you and I were, you know, before we actually started recording, um, you know, we were talking about what I think is that you don't always have to be directly promoting something. If, if people are interested in you as a person, right, if they're interested in what you're about, if they can see your passion for what you do, uh, in this case, board games, they're yeah. going to naturally be drawn to what you create, to what you produce, right? And that's why a lot of times the, I am attracted to people that clearly care about what they're doing, that they've got you know a desire and a hunger for it. Um, yeah, for sure. And that's why a lot of times I kind of find myself championing, liking these games that aren't necessarily that popular with, with a lot of people. But because to me, I feel like it's a passion project. It, it's yeah, it's yeah. like this, this person's, you know, they've put everything they have into it. And yeah, it might have some rough edges and it might be, you know, a little clunky here or there but mm -hmm. i would rather have that than this perfectly polished product that is like 15 other games i've played in last year you know what i mean yeah for sure and it's and it's cool to like hopefully talk and get to know people behind the board game media stuff i mean we've had so many amazing people um that just are a part of the dice tower that a lot of people yeah. just know from their segments it's like oh mike he he does solo games and like that yeah. all they know is oh man he does solo and and I'm sure right. at every convention, people come up to you and talk to you about solo stuff. I've been getting that with 3D yeah. printing a lot. And I mean, I love to talk to people <laughs> about 3D printing. Yeah. But uh, it's it's interesting, too, to like branch out from that and be like, well, I'm not yeah. just solo. I'm all right. sorts of different stuff. Yeah. And that that is something that, you know, obviously I, I – because here's the line I have to walk, right? It's, a, it's sometimes a finer line than others. Um, I never want to come across as being unappreciative – of the the solo community uh because i'm certainly not i'm uh, everything that i've done so far i think has been because i was for whatever reason embraced by a lot of solo gamers early on um nice. and so i wouldn't you know i wouldn't be doing anything if it wasn't for two things uh, the solo gaming community and mostly tom vassal to be quite honest with you yeah, yeah. um and so I'm appreciative of it. I don't shy away from being the solo guy or whatever. Um, mm. But obviously, you gotta I, stay you on know, brand. I'm interested in a lot. Yeah, you, to some extent, you have to, right? <laughs> but, you know, the, the dirty secret that I've mentioned a bunch of times, so it's not much of a secret anymore, is that I probably play multiplayer a lot more than I do solo. It's just that uh, I have found that there is a particular niche that solo gaming fits mm -hmm. in my you know gaming lifestyle that i really find important and so therefore i care whether there are good solo variants there for people that might want to you know mm -hmm. there's all kinds of misconceptions and and i get the jokes and they you know i mean a lot of them are quite funny to be honest with you about the solo gamers and oh you don't have friends and all that yeah okay yeah you, you get it it's a joke it's good <laughs> but it, it's really not what it's about. You know, the vast majority of people I know that are solo gamers have a ton of friends and they're actually into multiplayer interactions at the table too. It's just, mm -hmm. I, I think you can have both. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. that being said, after now that I've, I've repped my solo cred, um, there's a lot of other stuff that I, that I'm interested in and that I like doing even within board gaming. And that's why you know, it was funny. I have no idea, to tell you the truth, no idea why uh, Dan Hughes contacted me 
about being on This Game is Broken all, all the way back that first time he did because yeah, yeah. He, did, he didn't know me at all. All he knew me from were my solo mode segments mm-hmm. on, on Board Game Breakfast, right? And for better or for worse, depending on how you look at it, those are pretty... I, I, I'm pretty standard there, right? I don't really... <laughs> As year, as the years have gone on, I've kind of opened up a little bit and 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 become a little bit more loose. But especially my earlier uh, segments, they were pretty, you know, stare at the camera, talk to the camera, and have a nice very day. Much in, yeah, and <laughs> thank you so much for your time and have a nice. Yeah, very very much about getting information across, right? Right. So I don't know exactly what caused him to contact me about, hey, would you be interested in being a guest on this game is broken, mm-hmm. and that experience where I kind of came up with this, uh, this little game and I did a little guest host segment on the show and which would turn out to be the first of like, I don't know, I think I was on there like six times. Um, mm-hmm. that kind of reopened, uh, a part of my personality that I had really kind of shut down for a lot of years and didn't even realize I had done it, which is kind of this, um, creative humor, uh, side that, that, Again, I don't know why I had shied away from it for so long. I, 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 I just never really explored it once I got past like teenage years. You know, I used to always kind of, I did theater and 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 I did comedy stuff with with friends and I did writing and and all that type of stuff. And for some reason, when I got into my quote unquote uh, adult years, I pretty much put all that to the side. You know what I mean? I went to mm-hmm. work, went to college. Eventually, taking <laughs> taking the scenic route through college, I finished eventually, but it took me a while. And uh, I kind of put all of that, you know, creative humor stuff to the side and getting on that show with, you know, Dan and, and the Murphs and, and Matthew um, and Dave, it it just kind of reawakened this love that I have to, to just kind of, you know, be funny as yeah, much yeah. as I can, you know, and, and funny is, is objective, you know, Um but that kind of led into the podcast I'm doing with Dan now and, and right. uh, talking about board games, but doing it in a very different way. Because what I do right. on that podcast is very different mm-hmm. than what I do on my solo mode segments. And, and oh, hopefully sure. there are some people that like both and there might be some people that like my segments that have no interest in the podcast at all and vice versa. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I feel like I talked a whole bunch, Roy. Well, no, I'm listening. Um, also... <laughs> yeah. uh, that's one of the things I want to do with this too is like allow the guests a chance to like like share share their stuff you know um chat said well, that sure. uh it's your personality was the reason that they uh had you on the show so oh that's oh sweet. well that's cool that's, that <laughs> was, that's very nice yeah oh. um, so yeah i it it makes me feel good if my personality comes through you know you never know mm-hmm. you're you're looking at a camera you don't have an audience you know what I mean yeah, I think that's one of the things that's so funny too is like I've been at Gen Con before and somebody's come to me and it's like, oh my goodness, that's Roy Kennedy. I'm like, I'm so starstruck. I'm like scared to even talk to you. I'm like, dude, I'm a dude who like stands <laughs> in my garage looking at a camera talking to it. Because I mean, right. back then it was like literally right. my game room was my garage. So it's like, yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah, I'm chasing, uh, I'm chasing shopping carts around to troll Rodney. Yeah. Oh man. I was memeing Rodney. <laughs> My family went out of town for a weekend and I just decided to meme a Canadian like for the whole weekend. <laughs> that was fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Like you go to those conventions and things like that and you, uh, you, you, you get like reassurance that, oh man, people actually are out there watching your stuff, yeah. you know? And, um, yeah, that's, it's true. I, that's another reason why like coming together to do this sort of thing and like talk to each other. And like, even like when Dan had you on this game is broken and starting a podcast with you, like doing things together with other people that are passionate about like the same things you are and stuff like that does help like rekindle the flame of like doing board game media and like talking and like continuing to create together, you know, because it feels like there's actually someone out there listening or you're actually doing stuff together. Yeah. Because um, yeah. there's so many people that have done board game media or started a channel or been on the Dice Tower, all sorts of different stuff that have come and gone. Yeah. And we've seen so many people come through. And it'd be awesome to, like, yeah. have more of those people, like, continue their passion for it and just continue the drive and, like, help encourage them to, like, see how far they can take it. How they, they make your yeah. stuff better, like, figure, de- develop your craft and, like, um, just, just shine through uh, – the creation of your stuff. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. It's interesting. You say that, 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 that kind of sparked a little thought in my head, which is this idea of, of, 
you know, working on your craft and, and mm-hmm. all this type of stuff. And, you know, um, I go back and forth on, on that, uh, yeah, yeah. because I think there's almost this element of board game media, although it's changing, uh, I, I wonder if you agree with me on this. Um, there's still this element of board game media where there's this kind of DIY ethic, right? And, yeah, yeah. and it, people in board game media are allowed to get away with stuff that other media probably can't, right? <laughs> um, you Seriously, you know, there's not always the, the highest production value. Although, again, that is changing. You're starting to see more and more really mm-hmm. slickly produced stuff. But... I would argue that not necessarily do you see the people with the most engaging personalities doing that highly produced slick stuff. You know what I mean? Right. But still, a lot of times the people that have that DIY ethic have that great, you know, that, that mm-hmm. thing that I'm talking about where you feel like you know the person, right? And there are some that do both. I mean, Rodney is a perfect example of that. Right. There's a guy that has really slickly produced stuff, couldn't be more scripted, right? I think Rodney would be the first one to tell you that. He scripts his stuff, you know, to the to the nanosecond. Mm-hmm. But his personality still shines through, right? right. I mean, you still get that. Um, so my thing has always been, okay, if I, how much time do I spend on what I want to say and how much time do I spend on everything else, how it mm-hmm. looks, how it sounds? There has to be a minimum standard, right? I mean, it, it right. has to be something that is, you can you can actually hear what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That it's not distracting. That the lighting isn't so bad that mm. you can't really see what's going on. My biggest thing still to this day, Roy, is stupid autofocus. I can never oh, ever yeah, get sure. autofocus to work the way I want to. It drives me crazy. Um, after all these years, now could I spend the time to get that figured out? Yeah, and I probably should. But mm-hmm. how much how much time am I devoting to both? So. This is something I like I said I go back and forth on. It's like how much how professional do I want it to look? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of funny cuz I feel like I I I would tell people, you know, cuz I mean when I first first started doing like segments and doing like favorite game Friday, like I recorded that stuff on my phone. I did it in iMovie yeah. and like I I tried to make right. it look as good as I could and I actually it didn't sure. look that bad overall. Right. But it's just kind of like you can do it with whatever you have and I think just as people in general, you should probably try to improve your stuff, but it's sure, not necessarily sure. necessary because personality overall is more important. I mean, there are YouTubers out there with millions of subscribers that sit in front of a webcam, like a grainy right. webcam, and just yeah. talk. And Absolutely. I mean, that's part of the YouTube medium. So I mean, it's mm-hmm. not just, oh, board game media gets away with this or that. Yeah, like, there yeah, are true. YouTubers in general that make a living off of their grainy webcam videos. Yeah. And I mean, and it's pretty crazy. And I mean, even some of the biggest names, it's not necessarily about their production value or like how, how, um, great their effects are and their cuts and Mm -hmm. things like that. And all that stuff's really cool, but it's more about like people are tuning in because they, they like that person that they're watching. They're already like, Holy smokes. Like this is a person I'm going to come back and see over and over. What is, what is, what's uh this person doing this week you know um yeah yeah. so it's 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 kind of interesting like how youtube works because it's completely different than like tv or any or movies or anything like that it's the exact opposite but it's i mean you're basically selling your personality i mean you can have the the most sharp cut video and stuff like that but if it's not if it i mean if it's just educational and sharp cut and there's no personality right. there people aren't going to be coming back to it the same way they'll watch right. it to be like oh let me see they're talking about that board game i'll watch it so i can learn about that board game right but they're not going to come back just on your random video about who knows what game just to see what you said about it cuz yeah. you know they don't aren't necessarily going to care so <laughs> right exactly well and that's true because you know youtube is kind of like one of those you know it's kind of the great equalizer right because mm-hmm. You know, if you say or do something that has, uh, well, I was going to say has some value, but some of those YouTube clips that have a million views, I, I would mm-hmm. argue don't have a whole lot to them. Oh, but for sure. Something that gets people's attention, right? Something that, that that's going to get the, the, the capture the the zeitgeist or whatever. Um, you can get anybody with, with, a, with like you said, with a, with a grainy webcam can get as many people watching them as a network television show. Oh yeah. Right. You know, cause and it's you, insane. You know, when you, yeah. And so this is a, this is new, right? I mean, this mm-hmm. is, this is within the last 10, 15 years that that's been the case where, you know, kids growing up now 
have this knowledge that they can kind of present themselves out there to the world. And so, Mm -hmm. I don't know, I do think it's interesting that you've got kind of this platform. I wonder how long it's going to be kind of the wild, wild west like it is now where anybody can just pretty much throw stuff up there. So, And it'll be interesting because, like, most kids these days are not watching TV. Like, they're all watching YouTube. So it's like YouTube is basically what – I mean, YouTube is going to be everyone's TV, but it's just on demand. You can click – see whatever you want and it's it's kind of interesting because i mean there's definitely no shortage of eyeballs watching people's stuff you know that is true and unlike tv where only a very select few people can be on it anyone Mm -hmm. could be on youtube you know what i mean so that's what's kind of interesting i do want to say on the flip side of that though is like uh i Mm -hmm. i do always like try to make things better make things look better figure out ways to tweak things especially now that like board game media is my job like i'm always like okay well what can we do next like right. I mean, we put out a lot of things over at the dice tower but i'm always mm-hmm. like oh man let's let's like figure out like okay what are we gonna do now let's make a new intro for this let's do this here and oh man i'm figuring out how to do lower thirds on this thing where we'll have that pop yeah. up and okay now we got the overhead camera for the table so it like looks way better and we can zoom in here and there right. okay what's the next thing always figure out how to improve i mean it, it's hard because I don't have all day long to just think about ways to improve sure. things because we're putting out more content than almost everybody else put together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like drinking from a fire hose for sure. But yeah. at the same time, I still try to make the time to be like, okay, let's improve this. Let's push this forward. Yeah. Let's let's do this thing, do that thing. I mean, it's a lot of other things that aren't even like just the media. It's like, okay, how can we make the board game library better? How can we make these conventions yeah. better? How can we get people more involved with this and that? So, I mean, even like, hey, I'm starting this thing up is another thing. It's like, hey, yeah. instead of just sitting back and being like, okay, well, I'm going to sit back and just go through editing some videos. I'm like, I want to get out there. I want to talk to people. We have so many people like that come and become a part of the dice tower, but then drift off because they either get bored with it or they go off and start their own channels, different things like that, which is amazing, but it'd be really cool to like be able to talk with and learn from those people along the way. So, so yeah, no. And and that's, that's a, that's a great vision. Yeah. So uh, I did want to uh, have a, a stuff from this where we just talk to the, the guests that we have on, like how they started in board gaming and like what led them to where they are now. So, I mean, I know a lot of people out there might not know. I mean, I know I don't know. Mike, how mm-hmm. did you get into board gaming and like why did it become such a big thing for you? Yeah, well, I, I, I man, you want to talk about the cliche getting into board game story. I'm 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 it. I mean, <laughs> I. Uh, When I was a kid, you know, I played some games. Uh, Mm -hmm. We would play like, you know, kind of the standard card games. I remember I used to go to my grandmother's house and we would play Pinochle all the time. That was the big game was Pinochle. And we'd play Racco and a lot of the Mm -hmm. mass market games. So it's not like there was no culture of gaming at all in my family, but it wasn't a huge thing. Right. Um, And then through high school, uh, college, really video games was my gaming. I, I didn't really play a lot of, I really didn't play any board games through, through high school and, and college other than, you know, you'd play Monopoly once a year or sorry, once a year or whatever. Um, it was in my, I, I want to say I was in my twenties, mid, mm-hmm. mid twenties or so. And, uh, got introduced to, to Catan. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that was it. I mean, uh, played, played a, a four player game of Catan. And I remember at the time, thinking it was the most complicated game I had ever seen in my life. Like that's crazy. My mind, my mind was just like, I I was struggling to wrap my, my mind around the very idea because thinking back on it now, right. I had never played a game that had victory points before. Oh yeah. The concept of victory points was foreign to me. And it's such a like staple in board games in general. Now we, we take that for granted, right? Mm -hmm. I had never even heard the term victory points before. Got a race to 10. Yeah. That idea, the idea of the modular board, right? Mm -hmm. Where the things, all of that to me was like, made my mind explode. You know, now we all look back and we kind of chuckle at how, Oh, how cute, you know, Catan and how, how old and passe it is. And, and, you know, to an extent it is because things have progressed, but that game was a fantastic gateway to me. And I'm sure it's still a fantastic, I mean, it's selling a billion copies for a reason, right? I'm exaggerating a little bit. That game still sells. I know because I work at a game store twice a month just, you know, for fun. Catan sells on the regular. I mean, that game is always being always being purchased. So that's what got me in. 
Um, then I think the first game I bought for myself was Lost Cities, the mm-hmm. the Kinesia two player card game. Um, then I discovered Board Game Geek, and it was a pretty rapid either climb or descent, depending on how you look at it from there. Um, I, I, I got in pretty heavy. Um, I didn't get a big collection right away. That, yeah, yeah. that came uh, a little bit later. But Were you very um, like smart and choosy about the games you got? Did you do a lot of research about them first, or did you just <laughs> grab up everything you could? Uh, I, I was definitely into the, oh my gosh, that looks cool, I'm getting that. Oh, that looks cool, I'm getting that. Oh, that's an awesome theme, I'm getting that. Oh, that's what's awesome. a co-op? Yeah, I'm in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So so I did do that. I, I do remember my first kind of collection, where I got to the point where I called it a collection, filled like what would be maybe a, a two a two Calyx. You know, it wasn't Calyx at the time, but about that many games. I want to say I had like maybe 12 or 14 games. Um, and I know I had like Takanoko in there. I had Waterdeep. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I had kind of some of those staple gateway ish type games. Um, but again, it was pretty quick that, that I started to really go down the rabbit hole. And, and, and now the interest you asked whether I was, you know, I wasn't very good about it. And that is directly <laughs> what led into solo gaming gotcha. is that, um, I had, a pretty rapidly growing number of games and I did have a gaming group, but not one that met regularly enough that I felt like these games were going to get played. Right. And so I started to feel this anxiety. I started to feel this unplayed games anxiety of, you know, I'm, I'm accumulating stuff that I'm not actually getting any use out of. And so that's what really triggered me to say, wow, you know, some of these games say you can play them by yourself. Like Mm -hmm. I, I had no, no context at all for for solo gaming other than playing solitaire you know what, card game what was your only, first only, like hobby board game you played solo i wish i could remember i really honestly wish i could remember that feels um, like that should be like a statement like that you know you it, know that's it like should be, a pivotal it totally, point in your like career of board games or <laughs> board game media stuff you know yeah i think so but but like everything else in my life, I stumbled into it like an idiot. So yeah, I don't remember. I mean, I know I know uh, Friday was pretty early on. I played mm-hmm. Friday pretty early on. Um, but that, I don't think that would have been my first solo game. Uh, I know man, I played I really, a lot of I, Death I, Angel I, solo. Yeah, I played that, but but that came a little later. Uh, gotcha. That game is brutal, by the way. Um, I think I had it like yeah. back when it first came out. So I was like, Did you? You can play this by itself. What? Hmm. Yeah, so that's what got me into solo gaming is uh, this kind of anxiety where it's like, man, I've got all these games I, and, and, they're, and they're not getting played and I feel bad about it. And then once I started to do that, then I became really much more of a, of a cultivator, I guess you uh-huh. can say, of my collection. And that also <laughs> went overboard, too, because then what I did, Roy, was I thought, oh, this is a game I think this person would like, so I'm going to buy it. Oh, you know what? I bet they'd like this game, so I'm gonna buy yeah, it. So yeah. I ended up buying games for all of these, you know, people that I thought would like it, you know. And sometimes they didn't, sometimes they didn't. So now I'm having to be even more careful about being okay. Does this fit a particular niche that I don't have already? Right. Is it better at this particular, you know, theme or mechanism than another one? You know, yeah. and then you get into the whole thing of of when you produce content, that kind of opens up a whole different. Uh, avenue oh, of sure. okay what's something that i think people will be interested in seeing played solo even if it's a game that i you know there have been some times where i've gotten games that weren't necessarily in my wheelhouse but i thought you know what i know people are really interested in how this plays i don't see a lot of videos on how this is played out there i'm gonna go ahead and get it learn it and play it and film it you know you, s- you step on the train of the uh board game media cult of the new and you have to try to keep your feet under you <laughs> yeah well i as you know that's a that's a losing proposition unless oh, you're the for dice sure. you know what i mean um you you and even them i mean they, they still catch grief on facebook about not, <laughs> not not covering enough hot games and i'm like really really um like they cover plenty of hot games you know what i mean everybody's like oh you have to play all of your games five six times to review them which is yeah. insane and it's like but we need all of the reviews right now okay <laughs> right. i mean you just want us to make I'm these things the up like come on guys yeah yeah now look this is another whole thing of how much and if i've gone off track 
and I need to talk more about how I got into gaming. I will. No, no, this is um, what this is about. <laughs> uh, okay, good. There's there's this whole thing of how much how much I don't want to say credit, but I'm going to say credit because I can't think of a better word. How much credit do you give to your audience? Do you how many assumptions do you make? Because my thing is this. When I look at a review, when I as a consumer of media, not a producer, when I as a consumer of board game media look at a review, and I'm not talking about specifically Tom, I'm talking mm-hmm. about anybody. Right. I assume myself that this is a first impressions review, right? right? Because for the most part, most people aren't playing games 10 times before they review it. And right. if they are, they're making a big point of saying, I played this game 10 times, right? Right. So I don't buy that argument that you need to play a game seven times before you review it because 99% of the reviews out there are not that way because most people don't play games. Well, maybe that's not true. I do think that most people that consume a lot of board games, I'll put it that way, most people that are heavy consumers of board game media are the ones that are into the cult of the new that aren't mm-hmm. playing games 15, 20 times. That that right. would be my argument. I have no data to back it up, but that's what that's I'm like going with. When I did my Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea review, I was actually able to be like, yo, I played this game a lot. Like, I played this <laughs> yes, game. Like, when I walk up to the publisher's booth, they point at me and say, this guy's played this game more than we have. And I'm like, you guys should yeah. not say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. But I mean, but and I mean, true. I feel like it's true. I played with those guys at Gen Con and I was telling them the rules yeah. of how things worked. <laughs> and being, they flip over a token. Yeah. They're like, what does this do? Grab the book. I'm like, no, it does this. Like, guys, what are you yeah. talking about? Get the book for, man. You don't need crutches. Take off the training wheels. Exactly. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a different thing. I mean, and the thing is like, if you wait to play it 10 times, it will have already mm-hmm. been out by a whole bunch of other people. And then the review is That's not true. even nearly as hot as it was. The Dice Tower doesn't ha- – or Tom doesn't have that problem because right. people want to see what Tom says regardless of sure. how many other reviews there are. But majority right. of other people, like if you go make a review that is mm-hmm. for a game that's super old at this point, I right. mean people are like, okay, Mike did a video. Maybe I'll click it. But a lot yeah. of people click the video to get information about the game. And if those people have already consumed that information, they're really going to have to be like wanting to just see what you say about it. You know, I mean, maybe right. somebody will stumble yeah. upon it for the first time, but majority of the time that's not the case, you know? Yeah. And I have noticed something that, that makes me feel good too, is that I still get comments, um, you know, either YouTube comments or, or they'll email me or, or, or contact me in some way from videos that I did two years ago. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So it's not just the the, the new videos that are getting mm-hmm. noticed. I mean, people are going back because, you you know, you, there's new gamers every day. You know, there's oh, yeah, people that sure. are discovering this hobby every day. And they're excited mm-hmm. when, you know, Villages of Valeria is new to them. You know what I mean? It's it's not new to, to a lot of people that have been in the hobby for, for, you know, however many years. But this game is new to them, and they like it. And it doesn't matter to them that that was a video I did a year and a half ago. You know, yeah. they want to know about that video. And so where I'm here going, oh, man, I've gotten a lot better since then. That's not what it's about. I mean, I still had passion for what I was doing then. Even if I've gotten better over time, that video is still just as valid as one I create mm-hmm. tomorrow. You know what I mean? Because it's coming yeah. from the same place. It's coming from a place of I want to share what I enjoy with, with everybody else, Mm -hmm. you know, even in a playthrough, which is not a a, a review. Um, and, and I've gone back and forth in my early playthrough videos. I would pot, I would put a lot more editorial comment in there and I would make my feelings about the game much more clear, you know, where I would almost put like little mini reviews in there. I tend to avoid that now just because I don't want it. I don't want to blur the lines too much. Right. But I hope that just by me playing the game, even if I don't say whether I like the game or not, people can sense that I have passion for what I'm doing, you know, because yeah, for sure. otherwise, why do it? You know what I mean? I, I, I do it because I enjoy doing it. And, and that's, I think that comes back to the, what you were talking about earlier, which is so many people have kind of come through board game media, dice tower, et cetera, and then go away because I think you can get yourself so you get so in, enmeshed in the hobby and, and it's what you're thinking mm-hmm. about and it's what you're reading about and it's what you're watching and it's what you're listening to. And that you have to allow yourself ebbs and flows, right? You have to allow yourself, 
hills and valleys. And there have been plenty of times where I have not really wanted to talk about board games. I yeah. haven't wanted to shoot videos. I haven't wanted to, talk, you know, you need to take breaks sometimes. And I think that's OK. You know what I mean? And, and uh, I think sometimes when people go away, maybe it's because they're taking a break and they want to come back in some different form. And maybe they've just moved on to something else. And that's OK, too. You know, I don't I see think, myself. I think being, people sometimes are like stuck in like they're like, this is how my segment is or this is how my stuff looks. Yeah. And they're afraid to change it up. Like, I honestly. Right. Even even just changing it up a little bit can just make it feel yep. fresh or new. Like it's like okay, yep. I've done a whole bunch. Like I mean, I've seen you do it. Like it's like I've done a whole bunch of like solo things. I'm gonna have these yep. couple designers on, and we're gonna talk about a game this right. week. Or like even if you're just yep. like, hey, I don't wanna, I don't have, I honestly, I have zero. I don't have a new solo game to talk about right now. You could be like, yeah. I'm just gonna talk about my five favorites right now or like hey i've yep. been playing this one a bunch i'm just gonna talk about this new aspect about i mean you can still keep it on like the same sort of topic but then slightly right. shift it and change it you know sure. um i've been having a lot of fun with that with printed pieces like sometimes i'll be talking yeah. about like this technical aspect of 3d printing and sometimes i'll just be like i printed this thing i don't know <laughs> and, yeah that that uh, lord of the rings uh dice bowl by the way is wicked oh yeah yeah i i that i saw somebody posted sweet. Somebody just posted that on, like, I follow a whole bunch of forums and stuff like that. But I was like, I'm printing yeah. this out. I didn't realize that a bunch of people <laughs> would flip out about it so much because a ton of people were retweeting it and stuff. Oh, um, man, it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, very it's cool. crazy because, like, you know how much that costs to make in plastic? It costs, like, $2 in plastic. Wow. That's, that's, that's silly, could, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could buy that, you know, retail. I'm sure it would be, you know, 40 50 bucks. So. <laughs> You know, you were talking about changing stuff up, and and, and I'm going to put you on the spot, see if if you can see if you can do this. How long have you been producing content for Dice Tower? Dice Tower in general? Yeah. I don't know. I think at this point it's up to like, like four years almost. Okay. So, so. how many of you? Because you've done different types of segments. I've done a lot of different stuff. I bet you what? you can't name everything that I've done. I want you to name stuff up. I, that's what I was gonna. I was gonna put you on the spot and ask you what if some. What are some of the segments you've done? Because you've you're you're. I've gone you're through a bunch of different things. You should be able to change <laughs> stuff up. And you, you, you're an example. You have. You've done a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I don't um, how much of it you remember? So how how did I start on board game? I, I have several stories of like trying to get into the dice tower and 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 Tom telling me no. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. Really? <laughs> yeah. oh, that's a, that, that's pretty hilarious, actually. Yeah. 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 No, it's funny because like my old podcast, Epic Gaming Night, that I did for oh my goodness, for forever. We did Epic Gaming Night yeah. for four years. Um, wow. And uh, like my very first email to Tom Vassell ever was him telling me, uh, no, my podcast could not be part of the Dice Tower Network because this, this, and this. This is like episode 10. Uh -huh. I told Tom that. Right, like right. literally we're in the studio. I told Tom that the other day. And he's just like, he's like, <laughs> he was like, that's not true. And he like went and looked it up. And he's like, oh, yeah. And I gave you a whole bunch of reasons why. And I, he's like, I feel so bad. I'm like, listen, I didn't give up. Like I'm yeah, literally – here editing your videos right now right well and he gave you probably good advice too i would imagine oh yeah yeah for sure it's like hey like if you have an error in this thing and that thing like cut it out of your podcast he also <laughs> said right i don't here. know why anybody would ever record podcasts or do any content live look look where he is wow. now <laughs> wow okay he was definitely not a, he, he wasn't on front of that and That's and it's, it's funny. really funny because like how much stuff do we do live now and like oh literally the other night he streamed his podcast live so uh, yeah that's right yeah. so good yeah, stuff good that's stuff definitely it's changed but that's uh what was i gonna say but uh so i actually started through dice tower doing a board game blender z's right. show um right. so mark street i was talking to mark street because mark street had come on my podcast and i was like oh man i'd love to do a segment or whatever so mark was like hey check out or told z hey check out this roy guy he's got videos and i just started putting videos together um and honestly that's right. the best way to create board game media is just like yeah. just do it yep. and then you know you'll find a home for it you know and then you'll find your Absolutely. audience because no matter what right. you're doing i mean not everybody's gonna like it and yeah. some people will really like it and you just gotta find that niche mm -hmm. you know um so That's i did it. that yeah. and then um i had a segment what was it called first i really wanted to stick with like the epic thing so i had yeah. like like epic what was it it was like 
Epic Games and then like not Epic Games or something like that, or it's like called like Hot right. or Cold or something like that. I just had like this weird, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was it called? But anyway, it was like I would I would talk about a really big game and a really small game. So let's talk about like two games each segment, and it was right insane for me to do. And um, yeah, and Blender's like themed. So like yeah, every yeah. single week, like I had to be on theme and there were some weeks I was like beating myself up. Cause I was like, I don't have anything for this week. And right. being on the other side of that now, I know that like, that doesn't matter at all. It's like, okay, you missed a right. week. I mean, we'd love to have you, but if you miss sure. it, okay, that's fine. Um, but being on the other side of that, I like back then I was just like, I missed a week. Oh no. They're going to be like, Oh yeah. Roy's Roy's gone. They're, like, we no, no, no. Back on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, it was nothing like that. But then, um, Sam started, throat punch lunch at the time right which we're not allowed yep, to say yep. anymore i guess but um no we can't say that but actually i did come up with the name token punch lunch which i thought was funny oh did you really like it was actually my okay. idea and uh, uh who was it sam ended up having like a vote in between that and like tropical punch right. lunch or something like that and like mine <laughs> right. won and i'm like what up yeah. sam my my yeah. my vote i was like it just makes sense token punch i mean yeah. it's board games no no it does that was a um, good compromise because yeah but anyway, I was on that for like forever because when Sam first started that, I was like, this is thematic Ameritrash games. That's mm-hmm. my jam, you know, right. just because I ma- mesh more with like Sam's style of games with yeah. the whole thematic in your face sort of stuff. And it was a show that was about that. So I jumped right. on that. So I was doing both at the same time for a while there. I was trying to keep up with a the theme on Blender yeah, and yeah. then do a uh, token punch lunch at the same time. Um, and then eventually I had to stop doing Z's thing. And I'm like, I felt like. Z was just in the background, just being like, "Roy, abandoned me for Sam," and I kind of <laughs> did, but uh, but yeah, it was all yeah. good. Um, and then I did that for forever, and then I started doing reviews on the channel a little bit. And of course, this whole time I was doing my own podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, just random stuff. Um, I never really got on to like breakfast until like I actually moved here, <laughs> and I feel like yeah. I would have had like a faster on road to the dice tower if I was a part of breakfast, sure. just because like yeah. That was what get, got seen, you know. Um, yeah, for some reason that seemed to kind of be the flagship one. Uh, I don't know oh, sure. because it, it was it's whether, run by it was, Tom. It started you know. first, and then Tom was hosting it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, do love the fact that like everything is all together because Tom basically took everybody he could from all the shows and just yeah. turned it all into board game breakfast. And it feels good that we're like all in the same house now, basically. So it's not like oh, those are the blender mm-hmm. people and those are the throat punch right. lunch people. It's like no, no, no. We're all Dice Tower people, and we're all part of Board Game Breakfast now. So I feel like – um, And that's part that's of cool. what, what it seems like what this is about too, what, yeah, what it's you're about doing now. building that with, community, you know? Right, because that was kind of what you uh, – I don't. it's not like you pitched it to me. Like, yeah, Roy, let me see if I agree with it. No, you were just telling me about this idea, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and that was the part that kind of resonated the most with me is this idea of, you know, we are uh, a, a big kind of family of, of – People that love the love the hobby first and create content second, you know, we come from different walks of life, different areas. We have all kinds of different, you know, backgrounds and, and interests mm-hmm. and, and outside of board gaming even. But it's really cool to get to know some of these people. Like you said, I don't know how much of myself I've I've revealed or, or not. Um, I've enjoyed talking to you, and that's kind of the most important part, I think. So yeah. I think people, it's kind of what we've been saying. People get to know you just through hearing you talk, you know, in a, in a natural organic way, you know, uh, the, the, the actual details. Yeah. Those usually come through, uh, as far as why you love gaming and, and, and your passion usually will kind of come through regardless. You know what I mean? It's kind of funny because chats now reminded me about favorite game Friday. They're like favorite game. Friday. Uh, (laughs) And that was, that was probably like my thing that I did because I started that on Instagram and I actually got a whole yeah. bunch of people on board like back in the day. It's kind of funny what Favorite Game Friday became because I did it on Instagram for like three months, like just by mm-hmm. myself. And it was like my own thing on Instagram. And yeah. then I pitched it to Tom like, hey, I have this thing that I'm doing that a lot of people are responding positively to. And I have all these cool contributors on here talking about just it's super short, super simple. Yeah. And Tom was all about like, let's make really short videos, you know? Right. Um, so then that became part of the channel, but he's like, I wanted to be consistent. And like, I, how many favorite game Fridays have I missed in like the, the basically four years it's been going now? <laughs> like, right, right. I haven't missed like almost any. So it's like, right. 
even when there's like, oh, we can't do Brender or oh, we can't do breakfast or we can't do the other stuff. Favorite game Friday was there. You That's know, always there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Even and, when you're at cons and all that kind of stuff, too. And it's been so interesting because there's been so many people that have filtered through favorite game Friday into like the dice tower mm-hmm. proper. It's kind of funny because yeah. I mean, there's like a laundry list of people that have come in through like this Instagram thing I started and they'd start yeah. like feeling comfortable doing videos on favorite game Friday. Cause like, Oh, you just need to say the name of a game. Super right. simple. Like if, even if you're nervous on the camera, you can say the name of a game, you know? Right. Exactly. And this kind of like, um, helped bring people to be like, Oh cool. Like I, I I'm having fun saying the name of a game of each topic each week. It's super simple. I want to do more and be able to share more things. So it's like, like right. Jen, Jen came through doing that. Um, the uh the ladies from uh Crystal and Ambi were on Favorite Game Friday before they started doing stuff on the Dice Tower proper and like they right. their podcast joined the Dice Tower network. I was like, Tom, I had them first, even though I didn't have them. Like <laughs> I, I started right. following their podcast and was like, You guys should join me on this thing. It would be awesome. So yeah. I mean I did I do a lot of like scouting. I or back in the day I did a lot of scouting and trying to find people that were cool and excited about board games out there and be like, You should do this thing with me. Um, yeah, yeah, just cause it was fun. Um, and mm-hmm. there's been a, just a ton of different people like netters who was uh, a part of Bo- or the dice tower for a long time. She was like yep. super consistent with all the favorite game Friday stuff. Right. And it was just fun to have all those people come through and then go be part of board game breakfast, go be part of, uh, like token punch lunch and see people like yeah. start doing their own reviews and things like that. It's just been really fun mm-hmm. to see people come through that. Yeah, but, for sure. And that's I guess that's another another thing is that, you know, when you think of when you think of the Dice Tower, obviously you're going to kind of think of of the the core, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, Tom and Sam and and Z and now it's kind of, and Eric and Mandy it's kind and of Suzanne uh, and everybody so. becomes Mandy and Suzanne and you're kind of getting this it's it's like it's spreading out and you you still have kind of this core group, but you've got every, you've just got so many talented people and so mm-hmm. many passionate people that all kind of have their own perspective and all have something to say. And, and that's what's, and you know what the other thing is, uh, th- that I appreciate, um, is the positivity, uh-huh. uh, because you don't tend to see now, first of all, I know some of it is being moderated, but for the most part, you don't tend to see a lot of negativity with dice tower content. People, if they don't like a particular segment, you know, it's this whole idea of, look, this is a buffet. This is a smorgasbord. If you don't yeah, yeah. like it, that's cool. Move on to the next thing. There's mm-hmm. going to be some things there you're interested in. And that's what's been so nice about kind of Tom opening up breakfast to all of these different – because I know that there was some, like, uproar when that was first – anytime there's change, there's uproar, right? But oh, right, right. Um, people were like, oh, you know, th- this isn't what I'm used to, and you don't have the news on this day, and I don't – you know – and look, hey, I'm not I'm not discounting that people maybe wanted something or got used to something a certain way, but but you know, change change is oftentimes painful at first, but it's it's you know, if it's going in the right direction, and I, I happen to think it is, mm-hmm. um, you know, just kinda you know, tr- trust Tom. He's you know, he's done this a while. He's he's uh figured it out pretty well so far. You know, maybe maybe give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, um yeah. and kind of see where this where this goes. Um, what was I going to say? I mean, and he, it even started with like, he used to have contributors on his podcast and yeah. then, then he started board game breakfast as just like a news show. And he's like, Oh, let's yeah. bring these people on like, and started like mm-hmm. having more and more segments and getting people to do videos and things like that. Um, and I mean, yep. I watched board game breakfast for a long time before I started doing stuff for the yeah. next hour, you know? Um, I remember when they were trying to figure out the name, uh, for board game breakfast. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember when, yeah, yeah, like what he did a poll, I think, or something along those lines. I mean, I remember, you know, when it was first, like it first started being done. So, so it's I do crazy this, to think um, of what it was then and now. This video that Tom does look back, like I edit that, and it's yeah, like yeah. one of the hardest things for me to edit, just because we have to go and get all the links for all the videos oh, and like get gosh, all the pictures yeah. and stuff. Um, but it, it's funny, like now it's to the point where he's like, five years ago, I looked at these games and I'm like, I'm pretty sure I watched every single one of these reviews this week. Like this week, I had seen all these videos and these games are solid. Like, like yeah. the one that's going to go up Wednesdays, like Arcadia Quest and like Cash and Guns oh, 2 yeah. and like and like Paperback. And I'm like, I remember watching these yeah. when they came out and being excited about these games. And I'm like, man, that Absolutely. was five years ago. And I mean, yeah. And, and we also do 
a 10 year segment like what crazy <laughs> 10 yeah, years ago that's nuts. like um that's right. insane and i mean that that's one thing tom says about that look back all the time is like no one else can make this video like no, no one can no. they can't be like look at no. these games i reviewed 10 years ago they can't do it <laughs> you know uh, yeah so. it, did, it didn't happen that's exactly right so yeah that is one of the cool things about you know this group yeah and it's fun because we uh we definitely keep it positive and yeah, so so what made you want to like reach out at the beginning to like join? You know, it was um it was just kind of this thing where it took me about a year to uh-huh. to gather up the courage to make something. I had been thinking, you know, and I'm going to be honest, I'll be honest with you Roy and and anybody who watches and listens to this. Um even back when I was nervous and it took me a year, I always thought I think I could do something pretty good. If I put my mind to it, I think yeah. I can do something pretty good. So I, there was a part of me that, you know, maybe it's arrogant, maybe it's whatever. I hope it's not. But it was <laughs> this idea that I, th- I think I could do something that, that, that could be good mm-hmm. um, eventually. But it just took me forever to finally get up the courage. And I had a, 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 a spring break. I'm, I'm a high school teacher. And, and I had a spring break, so I had a week off. I didn't have a lot going on that particular week. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. So... Uh, I sat down with this phone, this iPhone six that I still have cause I'm cheap uh, and I haven't changed it. Um, I had that, I didn't have a tripod, I didn't have a mic. Um, and so the quality was about what you'd expect. And I filmed my first solo playthrough. Um, and I do remember that it was a little Steve Finn game called Comic run. And I, I, w- I was like, hey, this is, you know, this is all right. I put it up on YouTube. I made a little YouTube channel uh-huh. where I, I came up with the, with the name Solo Mode. I found out that it wasn't, you know, no one had had that name, which to me was crazy that no one had, you know, kind of taken that name as, right, a, as right. a, you know, as a YouTube channel or a content creator. Um, so I, I kind of snatched up that web domain. And, and really that once I came up with the name, I felt like, all right. I've got a thing. I've got something that I want to do. So I filmed the video. And then it wasn't long after that that I just cold contacted Tom out of just out of the blue with an email. Yeah. And I kind of pitched this idea. You know, I said, you know, I love board game breakfast. Uh, I have an idea for a segment. You don't have any uh, solo focused content on, on the show. I'd love to try to do something. And to my amazement, within a day, he emailed me back and said, yeah, film something and show it to me and send it to me and I'll take a look and tell you what I think. So I filmed a five minute review, (laughs) five minute, not review, but a five minute segment. Um, And so he's like, "Okay, yeah, um, this is good, but make it two minutes and try to focus on this. You know, he gave me some some positive, constructive feedback. I'm like, oh, okay." So I reshot it, got it under two minutes, took his advice sent it back to him. It was like a Saturday. I think, I think it was a Saturday. I sent it uh-huh. back to him and he goes, all right, it'll, it'll be on on Monday. And I was like, what? I was like <laughs> flipping out. I was flipping out. Yeah, and for sure. that was the first Monday it was on. And I think, I, I think I've only missed, I could count it on one hand, the amount of times I've missed over the, over the, since then. So, that's um, awesome. yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. And, and, uh, I, I still don't know, you know, uh, what 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 tom i think sees i I think he just wants to give people a platform i really do yeah yeah, yeah. um and and uh so it's cool he you know never felt the the pressure to be them right away like you know they've been doing it for years i never felt the pressure to be like you know you or the 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 people that were there right away i felt like i had the room to the the freedom to kind of figure things out and and just do my content the way that that felt right to me, and that's a tremendous amount of freedom to feel. You know, where you where you don't feel like every week is a is a, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? A, an interview or a, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Tom gives you this very supportive platform where he mm-hmm. you know he does want him to be under two minutes, <laughs> but other than yeah, that, sure. you know what I mean? And, and you know, and family friendly of course. But other than that, you know, do your thing and and. You know, try to have something to say, you know, don't do it just to do it because that's going to show. Um, but other than that, you know, do, do your best and, and, and uh, sh- share your love of the hobby. Awesome. Well, I think we're right at the yeah, hour mark, about. man. 
So uh, I thank you so much for coming on for this first episode. Yeah. And uh, I know we've had a bunch of people watching live, and then uh, hopefully nice. this will be up on the, the Dice Tower as well. So hopefully some more people can check it out. Um, this has definitely been an interesting inaugural episode and a lot of fun. And uh, thanks so much for coming on, Mike. Roy, thanks for having me on, and I apologize for all of the long-windedness. No, that's the point. Like, literally, (laughs) this is supposed to be a long-form discussion, and there's some things that can't be said, like, in a short amount of time, you know? I mean, I'm actually very passionate about that is the fact that, like, hey, you have to talk to have these, like, interesting thoughts and discussions because it can't be cut down to two minutes every time, you know? That's true. (laughs) You want long-form? I'm your guy. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, everybody, for checking it out. Um, we'll be back with another Spaces Between soon. And um, maybe I'll eventually have, like, the, uh, the the upcoming guests. Like, I'll announce them at the end of the, the show or something like that when that actually is an actual thing. But let me know if you actually enjoyed this and if this is a thing you'd like to see continue because it's just something new that I'm trying out. Well, thanks so much, everybody. And thanks again, Mike. And I'll see everybody next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.